Hey everybody, I am back with another book review. This is book review number 12. I'm super excited for this one. Um, mostly because um, I think I mentioned a couple videos ago that a friend of mine had given me a book that she had read and um, she was ranting and raving about it just being awful. And so, um, so I decided to read it as well. Um, and it's bad. So, it is this book, which most people probably have never even heard of, um, and it might not make a lot of sense to a lot of people. But this book is called The End of Forever, um, The Story of McKinjis and William Connor. Um, and this is by Denise Page Kerr, Carr? I'm not actually sure how to say um, her last name, but... Um, so, if you don't know, I... Um, know quite a bit about William Connor and um, McKinjis um, and um, it's um, I, I have worked um, with the site of Connor Perry for a long time and um, this is bad guys <laughs> This book is so bad. And it was not something that was like solicited by the museum as far as I know. Um, and I'm trying not to say a whole lot <laughs> uh, about the um, museum. But this book, I don't know what the point was of the book. Um, other than somebody trying to take what they think is a story worthy of Hollywood um, and Hollywood style and make it something that it shouldn't be. Um, so basically, if you don't know the story of William and McKinjis, um, and there's not, there's a lot of detail and not a lot of detail. It's a really complicated story, but basically William Connor, um, was a trader in trader, not traitor, um, trader, um, in the Indiana territory for a very long time. And, um, he, uh, lived and worked amongst the various native tribes that resided in Indiana in the late 17, early 1800s. Um, and so one of those, um, tribes is the Lenape tribe, um, who were, uh, originally further, East, and then over time, as all of the tribes were, they were moved slowly across the United States. And so they had been in Indiana for a good long while. And at some point he had come into contact with um, uh, McKinjis, who uh, was the daughter of um, who we refer to as Chief Anderson, um, who was um, a leader in the Lenape tribe. And um, so you come into contact with her, they get married, term used loosely because marriage for, um, for many tribes is very different than what we consider, um, American or, um, traditional Western, um, style of marriage, like church ceremonies, legal things, all that stuff. It's very different in, um, many tribes. Um, and so regardless of the fact they, for all intents and purposes, were married, um, and they had six children together, um, in the time that they were together, um, which was roughly about like 20 years, I think it was like 20, 21 years. Um, so anyway, um, there, William Connor had helped, um, broker and, um, translate for a lot of the treaties that various tribes had signed specifically within Indiana. And the final treaty um is the treaty of saint mary's um which i believe is signed in 1818 um 1818 or 1817 i can't quite remember which one um but when that treaty is signed that basically removes the lenape from this area they are to basically give up all their ties to the indiana land um and then they have to move um further west initially to missouri um and then eventually over time they move even further west to Oklahoma or Oklahoma territory at the time. Um, and so when this treaty happens, um, McKinjis and, um, her six children 
um, they go west with the tribe and they never have contact really with um, William Connor um, for the rest of their lives and he never has contact with them. Um, after they leave, there's a little bit of like a discrepancy in the timeline there, but at some point after they leave, um, he uh, does officially marry a white woman named Elizabeth Chapman, um, who he then builds one of the first brick houses in Hamilton County uh, for. And that brick house is um, still standing and it's on um, the site that is now a um, museum for all intents and purposes. So that's the short version of the story. Um, he does have 10 children with Elizabeth Chapman, by the way. So total, William Connor had 16 children. So all that aside, um, cause that's the base and the bones of the, of the history. There's, you know, a lot more nuance and stuff that goes into the history of William Connor. This book basically romanticizes the whole thing between William and McKinjes and basically makes William more of like a predator which is just gross um to make a person seem more like a predator um because McKinjes was uh, we don't really know ex her exact age but she was more than likely um several years younger than him um the book says 15. um they didn't keep birth records so who knows what the actual age was. Um, and then the same thing when Elizabeth comes along, um, because she was uh, 17 or 18 when they actually get married, um, but he had more than likely encountered her and her family before that, so she would have been probably 15 or 16. Um, so again, just kind of that sleazy kind of predator um, vibe going on, which I've never been a huge fan of him as a whole just because like personality wise it's just he's just kind of a sleazy guy business wise he's very savvy and um, cutthroat um, which you need in the business world but that aside making him seem more like a predator just doesn't it just didn't work um, but then also just to like make up a bunch of stuff and it was just very whitewashed and like oh they were so in love um but it's not even really love it's like teenage love like it's bad love it's the it's the high school level of like he's just flirting the whole time and that's how he manages to um manages to to get her to to marry him and it just really grated on my nerves but then also just this like whole concept of like people couldn't speak English um, or that like all natives speak very broken English you know doing that white man is good man that's the way it was written and it really bothered me um, and I just it, it it's bad I don't know who hurt this author to write this um, and supposedly it was an opera why why anyone would ever sing any of this is just beyond me like it's written as it's very um, lyrical um, in in the the book writing, um, so I could totally see it being an opera, but it's awful, like it's it's horrendous. Um, there's nothing good about it. The the even just the cadence of the writing it is written. I have eighth graders who write better than this, and they don't write that good to begin with, but they write better than this. And it's just, oh gosh, I do not recommend it. I give it a whole set of zeros. If I could give it more zeros, I would. Zero stars. N no, not good. Terrible. If any person out there, like, seriously likes this, I have so many questions for you. Um, because this is just, this this is just, it's, it's disrespectful. It, it, to the history like regardless of how I feel personally or anybody feels about the actual story and the situations that happened with the native tribes white side native side this book is disrespectful to both sides in my opinion um the I I just hate that we have this idea that we can just romanticize these mixed race relationships um when there's 
a lot going on in there and it's not just oh a white guy fell in love with an Indian and then he saved her from living the savage life but oh she had to leave because her tribe left. There's nothing romantic about it like she the way that the book makes it they try to have a lot make it like a lot more sympathetic towards um McKinjis, which I agree it is it should be definitely more sympathetic to her because um because she's really getting the raw end of the deal being that she's native and being that her children are native um but it's gone about the wrong way um and it just makes it very very disrespectful and it's also just like even though the the book talks about how the Lenape and a lot of native tribes for that matter um pass things through the the matrilineal line so the mother's line um so it's very important for McKinjis to remain with her um, people or close to her people because as the daughter of a tribal leader she has a lot of say and a lot of power within within that tribe um, and within her clan um, but just the fact that like she doesn't get a say like they basically made it like William just told her that she's leaving and then she was like okay I'm leaving <laughs> No. And the worst part is we have no written record of anything that happened with them. Um, because, you know, they didn't write or keep records. Either of them, n neither William nor McKinjis or any of their children, they don't have records of what happened to them and why they went west and what their actual feelings were. So this is, this is literally made up garbage. Um, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Just... I can live with an author taking creative liberties with historic figures and I probably would have been more okay if this was well, well written and it wasn't. Um, I probably would have been a little bit more okay if it wasn't a topic that I deal with on a daily basis. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of pushback um, because this is a local author to where I live. Um, and um, I'm sure that they will try and say that everything that I say in this video is wrong and very vindictive. It's, it's not, this is literally just my personal opinion. The book sucks and it should never have been published. It should not have seen the light of day. It's, it's awful. It's awful. So for the end of this video, do not read this book. <laughs> it's like, if you see it, throw it out don't read it. It's so bad. Um, it's kind of a running joke now amongst my friend group and we're actually passing it around to read because it's so bad. We're passing it around. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's oof, zero out of five for this one, guys. Book, book 12 is a dud. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, we'll get back to, uh, I am still reading the other series, but this is a book that is less, oh, maybe a little more than a hundred pages. I don't quite remember. Um, but, um, it, it was a fast read. I read it in an hour and a half. Um, so, um, but I, I'm also still reading the, um, the other series that I started. So I'm going to be continuing reading that. And then also um, just stumbled a bunch, uh, stumbled across a bunch of other books um, that were being thrown out. They said that they had to get rid of them, and I saved them. Um, one series was the Magic Treehouse series, which was a series I loved as a kid. So it's now in my classroom. So my kids are, um, my students are starting to read them, even though they are much. They're written for a much lower level than eighth grade, obviously, but they're like this was actually a good book, and I'm like I'm glad you guys are enjoying something that I enjoyed. Uh, but I grabbed a couple series um, uh, from that uh, pile to read as well. So um, I'll have two more series to be reading at some point this year. Um, I added them under the <laughs> ever-growing pile of books by my bed. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching. As always, if you guys have book suggestions or ideas, um, feel free to send them my way. I obviously do read them. Um, it just might take me a little while um, after you get me the, the titles or um, if you want to do like my friend, um, Chris did just hand me the book 
Um, yeah, I will get to it when I get to it. Um, so there you are. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.